Hey guys, Gavin from Battlefield Bricks here, back for another video. Sorry about my voice, but I'm just getting over a cold right now, but uh, this time around I have something a little bit different by having four complete mocks go over with you guys, uh, depicting the four seasons in World War II scenes. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video where I'll actually be announcing my next large scale mock series. Now you might be asking yourself, why did I disappear for so long and then come back with four new mocks? Well, the answer is quite simple. I was uh, really just preparing for my next big mock series, and then I gave myself the challenge of building a mock a week for a year to showcase on a show I watch called uh, Brickin' with the Beard. Uh, I wanted to be able to produce more content, but found myself not having the time to build, film, and edit all in a week, so I figured I would showcase these off in, a, in batches as I see fit. And if you don't want to wait to see what I build each week, make sure to check out my Instagram and Brickin' with the Beard, which will be linked down in the description below. Now, don't worry guys, I should still be able to run a build series along with the weekly mocks. Also, as you've probably noticed, uh, my sig fig is now going to come up on screen and talk along with me and start to point out things I talk about in my builds. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and with all that taken care of, let's get right into these builds. And starting off, we have a British six-pounder position in the spring of 1945, located in Italy. I really just wanted to work with the olive color palette here, and I was super inspired by this six-pounder design by Brit Bricks on Instagram. And I really wanted to work with some smaller scale dioramas here, uh, just to kind of focus more on the detail. Now working on something like Khan is super fun because of how big it is, but there's a lot of areas where I wish I could have just added more. But something within like a 24 by 16 or even 32 by 32 base plate can just really limit your space but make you choose your parts more carefully if that makes more sense. So for this one, uh, it was a lot of the artillery shell uh, pieces from Brick Arms, and I just kind of scattered those about to give the position a more lived-in feeling, uh, along with some sandbags, crates, guns, all just kind of piled up along the sides of this little dugout position. Um, another one of my favorite things about this one in particular was the camouflage netting I was able to get. Uh, it was one of the, or actually two of the uh, net pieces that LEGO makes and I connected them just by weaving leaf elements and whips in between them. It gives us this really, really nice effect. And zooming out to the whole mock, you can see how I accomplished the grass and it's just uh, all those old flower stem pieces. Uh, recessed by about uh, a brick or two plates I believe uh, I think it's actually a brick and a plate uh, just to just get those little tops and really kind of sell the uh, grass effect rather than just using plates I also did some bushes intermittently in there to just fill in gaps because I don't have a ton of those olive pieces and I also tried out some uh, leaf weaving for the first time here with these uh, cypress trees I posted up on the side. Now coming back to details, uh, I took some pictures of some of these mocks without the minifigures to really showcase that these don't really need the minifigures. Uh, there isn't a lot of blank space. The, the items and scatter I choose from mocks try and tell a story so that the minifigures don't have to be there. It also really breaks up a lot of the negative space of this would really just be a tan hole in the ground with a gun and some minifigures, but having the spent shells, the ammunition, the crates and barrels, the rolled up canvas, it all just really helps to sell more of this story. Alright, and coming off into the summer of 1944, we have a D-Day scene with some 104th Airborne uh, ambushing a Flak 88 position. Uh, I know we're going from one gun position to another, but 
these were actually separated in the building process but this one i had an entirely different approach to uh i wanted the trench to be like the main focus rather than the like technique of the grass the netting and uh the trees uh i wanted to get this really interesting shaping and uh kind of layout to the trench really where it wasn't so rigid and structural 90 degree angle uh, that's what I see a lot of trench builds looking like and they can work in some cases but a lot of the times trenches were a lot more flexible and went along with the terrain so to kind of get this look I used a lot of uh, mixel joints hidden underneath all of this uh, ground cover uh, to get a slight angle uh, to the like from bottom to top so it inclines a little bit and also just uh, on the like x-axis so it'll just like rotate around and be at different angles uh, it was super fun getting those to all line up and especially to pose these figs in a really interesting way using some crazy arms and fig choice can be really make or break for a mock and for this one in particular i went with uh some 101st airborne guys and i gave them some uh netted pot helmets uh, geared them out gave them some crazy arms uh, gave them an interesting pose and then for the veramark guys they also had interesting poses but i was more focused on their uniforms or kind of like their equipment really uh, so for it being a flak crew, I thought it would make more sense that they would be wearing just kind of more casual clothes and not wearing their full harnesses and everything. And moving into autumn here, I have a scene depicting a American half track going through the Hurtgen Forest on patrol. I really just wanted to work with something other than green at this point. Uh, and I really loved that the main focus of this was just the bright, popping fall colors. Even though I did add in some green to accent because it just felt overwhelmingly warm on the color palette to me. And this half track here is designed by Militaristic Bricks on Instagram with my own little tweaks here and there. But I really, really enjoyed this build. Uh, and I felt it fit really well into the scene that I was trying to create. Uh, I also went with a kind of new technique for me, but not for many. It's putting uh, track links into the ground itself to give the uh, like impression of track links that are like pressed into mud. And I, I think it worked really well here. Uh, I wish I could have made it a little bit more of a jagged edge line but unfortunately I don't have many other angle plates in dark tan other than this specific angle but and up here we've got some guys I got from a brick fabric uh, I got some of their swamp camo bodies and I really wanted to throw them into something uh, and I felt like they just like perfectly blended in with this kind of scenery here uh, again, some pictures with no vehicles or minifigs, just to kind of showcase the landscape that uh, that when I build, the main focus of the mock is going to be, of course, the story of minifigures and vehicles, but the scenery is just as important, if not more so. For example, here uh, I have some moss growing on the rocks and uh, vines of the fallen trees that are coming over at the edge and the dead leaves piled up on the ground. And finally, coming into the winter season, we have Kharkov of 1943. Um, here I have just a, depicted a Panzer IV H uh, going through the snow, uh, moving past some dead Russian soldiers. Uh, this Panzer IV is originally designed by Panzer Brick Labs. Absolutely fantastic guy. Go check him out and make sure to check out his website, which will be down in the description as well. Um, this one, I really just wanted to play with snow techniques since I really haven't 
touched white bricks in a snow capacity in a long time. But uh, I was really happy with what I was able to uh, achieve here. Uh, a lot of these uh, grass pieces had to be inserted not just one plate but two plates down just because of how long the stem is. So working around that was a whole challenge on its own. But I especially really like just putting the pine trees mixed in with the white snow covered trees as well. And back again to fig placement uh, with these guys especially, uh, the Panzer crew being half in, half out, posted up on the back, uh, and all these dead Russians here, uh, using crazy arms is really helpful here, and I'm really definitely grateful I have a lot of them. But yeah, that's the last one for the winter mock. So what I might have forgotten to say at the beginning of this video is actually my next big build series is going to be based off of one of these battles represented in this video. Now I really had a fun time building all four of these dioramas and I had a lot of ideas on how to expand all of them, but one was a clear winner from the beginning for me and it was... That's right guys, in the coming week be ready for the first episode where I'm going to be discussing the plan and breaking down the techniques I utilized in this diorama and how things will be changing for the final mock. And with all that said, I'd like to say thank you guys so much for watching and to make sure that you guys like, comment, and subscribe and to hit the notification bell if you guys don't want to miss that first episode of Building Karkov. Bye.